welcome to episode nine of the Making Stories podcast. I'm Annalisa, and over there or there, depending on how she cuts it, is my wonderful <laughs> dear friend and colleague Claire. Hi, love. Hello. Hello. Who's, who's sitting in Canada, and I'm sitting here in Germany, in Berlin, and we're so excited to be spending another episode with you if you're tuning in for the first time we're making stories um we uh do this podcast every other week and we're talking about all things knitting specifically sustainability and knitting and if you're a returning viewer welcome back um we love hearing your feedback and we especially love that you enjoy the better tech quality which we're really proud of um Yay. so <laughs> Yay for that. Um, it's by the time that you'll be watching this, it's going to be just under a week until the release of this baby here, our upcoming issue five. Um, and we're going to talk a little bit today about all of the things that we're going to be doing to celebrate the launch of issue five. Claire is going to dive into a wonderful blog post that she wrote this week. Um, and last week as well. Um, yes. <laughs> like, yep. Um, and we have a little bit of knitting to share with you. We're like, we're both laughing because the blog post, I kid you not, the blog post is absolutely awesome. Um, it was turning out to be a very long blog post, which is why we decided to chop it into several parts, which is where that thing you wrote it this week and last week came from. Anyways, we're so excited <laughs> that you're spending some time, some, some time with us today. And um, yeah, Claire, what do you want to start with? Oh, where to start this week? It's been so busy, um, but we're having a great week. Um, and yeah, as Hannah Lisa mentioned, there's a new blog post. The last two blog posts that I've put up um, have been all about adjusting length in patterns. Um, as she said, I in the beginning I was kind of like, oh, so this is going to be the most easy one to approach and it's not going to be like a huge big thing. And then I started writing it and it went on and on and on for ages and ended up with all these different parts in it. And um, I think after a conversation that you and I had together, you were like, that need splitting down so that's what we did um so this week's blog post has been getting quite specific about areas you can adjust length in a pattern um but the one before that have you not read that one that's kind of more it's like the ground level going in and it's about how to do those actual calculations to find out how many rows you want to take in and take out because that's basically all adjusting length is essentially is removing or adding rounds or rows at certain points in the pattern where you need to add or take away length. Um, the thing is it can get quite complicated depending on where it is you want to make that adjustment or if there are stitch patterns involved which we're going to be getting to next week. <laughs> That's the third part in the vlog series. Um, so yeah it can get a little bit more complicated but it's been really interesting to write because I think, I don't know, as I add length and take away length a lot in my patterns and when I was first thinking about that blog post I was like oh that's like a really straightforward thing to do you just add or take away rows and then I started writing it I was like oh there's actually a lot more to this than I thought so it's been kind of Absolutely. fun for me um it's been interesting for me to write and um trying to get what's in my brain down on the internet so so yeah, I've had a really nice time writing it. Um, I'm going to put all the links to both of those posts. Um, but yeah, it kind of, um, as you'll notice later, I don't have anything particularly new on my needles uh, because I just haven't had time to do any knitting majorly. But I'm going to show off in a little while something that's been on my needles for a while that actually relates really well to that. Um, so yeah, that's what we're up to with the blog. It's super fun to write at the moment slightly I got slightly tangled with it the other day I'm not gonna lie 
off, but it's fun. But that happens, that happens, and I completely understand why, because it is really one of those topics where on surface level, um, you're looking at it and you're like, okay, this is quite straightforward, you know, you just like, like add a few rows or rounds and, and then subtract them. And then when I read the first draft of your blog post, I was like, ooh, shit, this is a lot more complex than I thought, um, yeah. which is which is good because that I think is sort of the direction that we are pushing in. Like when we under, when we get to the point where we're like, okay, this is this is a complex this is a complex topic. Then it's usually one of those topics where we're like, people have questions. Like you, the knitters, have questions yeah. around this, and we're writing this blog post because we want to be helpful and you know like take the mystery out of doing all those adjustments that will then help yeah. you make something that you really love. Um, and what I really, really liked about that first blog post is that, you know, it does walk you through the calculations. It also, um, shows you how you actually can figure out whether you or not you need to add a little bit of length, because that's yeah. something that I remember so clearly the first few sweaters that I knit, they fit okay, but not super, super well, but yeah. I really wasn't sure why that was the case like it was like oh, like because I'm also not a sewist I haven't studied you know pattern design or anything so you know I was like okay it's pinching here it's pinching there but like do I need to add length do I need to make it a little bit bigger how do I actually figure that out and that's the other aspect yeah. that I really like about that first blog post because it really helps you um figure that out and I think there's a trick in there that you are doing right now with the thing yes. that you have on your needles. Is that right? Yes. Yes. Let me show you. So um, if you've watched the podcast before, you will have seen the beginnings of this sweater, um, which is a sweater it's for my so husband. Gorgeous. Ooh, it's Lucky him. On it. Can you maybe just tell him that you're actually knitting this for me now? <laughs> you know I'm going to wear it more than him in the end as well. I always end up stealing them back. Um, but yeah, if you will recognize this possibly as it's also the fern and feather pattern that I just knit for myself as well. So me and Chris have got matching sweaters. Um, he saw me knitting mine and was like, ooh, that's really cool. And um, so I picked his chest circumference from the pattern cast on merrily got gauge and then assumed it all would be well um all was not well it didn't fit him um so this was you know down here in most of an arm when i made him try it on again and was like "Ooh, there's something funky happening right there um the first thing was even though i knit a little extra length here on the yoke it was still kind of snug under his arms mm. um and there was like a weird so this was kind of like bunching up there was a lot of extra space mm. across his chest and um and he's actually got quite a broad chest so I never really think of that as an issue for him because even if it is slightly bigger he kind of just you know bulks it out a little yeah. bit um because especially he's got quite a broad back too so I've never really come across that as an issue um but he is quite muscular on his back and his shoulders so I think that's added to it where the yoke is fitting quite well across here but mm. then when we're getting further down like in at the front mm, it I was see. just like bulking up so one of the reasons before we get to the length adjustment that that's a possibility is let's remember that all patterns are based on standard sizing measurements and you've got female and male there's like there's nothing in between for us to be able to go it's very standard sizing um which you need something to work from but let's face it we're not no two people are exactly the same and it gets quite complicated in real life so I think that was part of the problem so when you've got women's standard sizing more often than not the ratio of the bus circumference compared to the upper arm is very different to a standard men's mm. measurement. Um, tend to have a lot smaller upper arm compared to the chest than men's standard yeah. sizes do. So 
I learned that from Marina. I can't take credit for that knowledge. She told me that because she's very smart. I just thought I'd give her a shout out. That. Then I don't sound yeah. like I'm like, oh, this is what this is about. <laughs> I didn't know that until Marina told me. I just want to put that out there. This is, um, the, this is the proper explanation for what I described, I think, in the last episode or the episode before as patterns that are written for women's standard sizing take like take into account boobs <laughs> exactly <laughs> this is Hannah Lee's way of explaining it that was Which... Marina's way of explaining it now you know why she's our tech editor <laughs> <laughs> but also you're completely right though you don't have to use the technical lingo to know what you're doing so um so yeah that was the interesting thing there so what I've done is I ripped it right back to the the yoke and I'm going to add a little extra length which is what I'm going to talk mm. to you about um, in a moment but um, basically to solve that issue that we were just talking about I'm going to redistribute the stitches so I'm going to put more in the sleeves and less in the chest and I'm also going to cast on less under the underarm because it is mm. coming out quite a bit bigger um, and I don't think he's going to need it and it'll kind of just bring that extra fabric in ever so slightly mm, um, that's smart so that's the plan with the yoke but what I did was because Chris works strange hours so he's not always here for me to be like put this on um, I'm doing the thing that I talk about in my first blog post which is if in doubt if you try on a new pattern that you just got off the needles and you're like ooh something's not feeling right I don't really like the fit but I have no idea what it is that's causing it grab a sweater that you absolutely love it doesn't have to be hand knit it can be store-bought whatever one you've had forever but one you know you like the fit of or you like the look of um or in a certain area where your new fo is feeling a little bit uncomfortable if you know you've got something that really fits well grab it out and start measuring Mm. it so um this is a sweater that i knit for chris a couple of years ago um, and he wears it all the time. Um, it goes into the woods with him. He slept in it in his hammock. Um, it's just really comfy it's and we know it fits pretty. really well. Isn't it nice? So this is, in case anyone is wondering, this is Greta. I think you pronounce it Greta. Probably you don't because I'm saying it weird. Um, and it's by Brooklyn Tweed. Um, and it's a beautiful pattern. This is actually a bottom up, um, sweater pattern and it's very very nice um so and chris has worn it to death he absolutely loves it um so much so that i need to do some mending on it because now it's getting holes um but this is what i did for him so the first thing i did knowing that it had been a bit tight under the arms is i got my tape measure out and i just measured the depth of the yoke and straight away that told me when i compared it to where i ripped it back to i knew that i hadn't added enough length there so I can work to that measurement or calculate the rows exactly like I talk about in the blog post um and then you don't have to it takes all the mystery out of it you know what's fitting and what isn't and I could do the same in the blog we're not talking about the width or anything it's just length but I did the same for the width um you can do something very similar in that I looked at how many how much room there was before I'd separated for the body and the sleeves in in this area and I looked at how many stitches were going there and I realized that that was a lot smaller than how many than the length there as well if that makes sense so basically I just took all the measurements off this and then applied it to the new sweater and then I can work from there and then I know that I'm going to get something that actually fits him and doesn't look strange and bulky and tight. Um, True. Because, you know, he was, he likes to go into the woods and do woods things, so, and sleep in hammocks, and he's that person. <laughs> so whenever he's wearing, I want it to be warm and cosy, but also really comfortable, because if he does on, like, the strange man he is, sleeping in minus 12, if he wants to sleep in his sweater... I, it, you want it to be comfy. <laughs> yes, absolutely. And I I mean I love I love all things outdoors. Also Chris has a YouTube channel where you can see all the as Care yeah. calls it woods things that he gets up woods to. Woods things. <laughs> yup. He does. Um, it's actually very good. 
it's really good. It's really good. Yeah. Uh, we should we should add a link just in case you're curious. Sure. You add a link to case. to Chris's YouTube channel down below because yeah. I love watching it. <laughs> Uh, it's a totally different kind of podcast, but very beautiful. Yeah. Um, can I add one little thing? Yes. So, um, I will often, um, not take out my tape measure <laughs> when I, <laughs> uh, when I compare a thing that I'm working on to something that I've already cast off or that I've bought. I will just lay the sweater on top of the other sweater yeah. to eyeball if things are going well. Um, which is probably not what I would do if I were knitting a gift as you are, but just for myself. And I, that's, that's just super helpful. Like, you know, it's like literally yeah. two things. Like you go to your wardrobe or closet or whatever and pull out something that you love wearing and then just put it on the floor and put the other thing on top and you can check that. And yeah the sweaters that i wear most i remember so clearly doing that i have a store-bought sweater that i bought i think probably 10 years ago that i love absolutely love um and my both my citrine and my hay sweater which are two sweaters that i absolutely love are kind of modeled after the sweater and i remember when I knit citrine, that was super helpful because I was pretty sure that it was going to be too wide, which it wasn't. It was exactly the yeah. fit that I wanted. But it looked just really, really wide on the needles. Because it's so boxy um, as well, yeah. Yeah. Mm. So so it's a really good tip. And um, both blog posts are absolutely awesome. So you should definitely go and read them. Thank you. Yeah, and that's a great point. I think in the first um, blog post of the series... I kind of say at the bottom, like, I I go very technical straight away in that actually calculating the specific amount of rows you need to add, just because gauge comes into play there. Um, and just bearing in mind, if you're just knitting to a certain length or you, or you are eyeballing it, um, it could be once you block it, then it ends up a lot bigger than what you want it mm -hmm. to do. So it's a good thing to keep in mind that way. However, once you get a bit more confident with it, and like I said, if you just knit it for yourself and you know the kind of fit you want, and also just knowing how your swatch behaves when you block it is also really handy at that point. If you know that the knitting is going to grow yeah, true. a lot, of the fabric's going to stretch out, then that takes a mystery out of it as well. So the blog post starts quite like making those calculations. But as you go on, there's literally nothing wrong with throwing them on top of each other, eyeballing it and doing... You do whatever mm. works for you, so... So, yeah. Yeah, Yay. I really like writing it. I hope um, I hope it's useful to someone out there. It. I'm very sure it is. <gasps> oh, you have an FO! I have an FO! It's not blocked, which is why it's li a little bit wrinkly. Oh, I'm so happy. <laughs> oh, it's it so turned nice. out so nice. It's so, it's so beautiful. So, I love that um, color. this is uh, one of our own patterns. This is the treasure cowl from our kids collection, a design that Claire put together. And it's absolutely wonderful. I can't wait. So. I finished this a couple of days ago and I was very tempted of putting it on Orin because this is for Orin, uh, our little one. Um, uh, but then I was like, no, like, <laughs> <laughs> Orin can't wear this after we've recorded the podcast. Um, but um, it's been kind of rainy and Orin's favorite pastime lately is jumping into puddles and I can't blame them for that. It's, I need to, I don't have like waterproof shoes. I don't have rubber boots or anything. Oh no, and I need to get need them. some. Yeah. yeah, I want to jump into puddles. Anyways, uh, jumping into puddles means mud everywhere. I didn't want to have mud on this before I showed it to you. So, yay, it's done. Ooh, it's blowing out. Okay, this is better. So let me walk you through it. So this is a pattern designed for John Arben um, Textiles Knit by Numbers DK. And this is also knit in that yarn in a colorway. Ooh, wait. Colorway number. I know, I do this every time, don't I? Um, well, it's hard to remember those seven, ones. I know. Seven. 75. Oh, nice. 
I can never time, remember which, those because there's so many. I know. Which is one of the absolute astounding things about this yarn range is the range of colors that you get. Um, yeah. So it kind of it's interesting how it looks in different lights so on the camera i can see that it shows up more as a burgundy red here in this light that i have right now it shows up as like plum um mm. so it's which i actually really like like i like the the variety of colors that you get <laughs> um and i also really love how smooth and it's and and the stitch definition that you get. So I'm going to show that, you know. Yeah, um, that's such a nice yarn. Yeah, it's a beautiful yarn. Um, mm. And I hope it's going to wear really well. Uh, so yeah, this cowl thingy is, I think, perfect for little ones. But I also kind of want to have a big version for me. <laughs> So if you're knitting this, <laughs> you're, yeah, because you can wear it. Like, I mean, I'm, I'm on the bike pretty often, you know, getting or into daycare and back and stuff. And this is just really perfect of covering that. If I yeah. weren't wearing the, the shawl, you know, that like neck area that always gets exposed and gets like wind in and stuff. And yeah. I always find no matter, no matter how thick my shawl is, you know, when I'm on the bike, it will there will be wind blowing in here and stuff. And mm. because you have this folded turtleneck, that won't happen there. Um, and the other thing that I really like is with traditional cowls, you know, that are just shaped straight. I find them pretty tricky to fit, actually, because you want them close fitting so that they keep you warm, but also not that they're choking. And I think here, what you did... Um, by making it flare out over the shoulders after the turtleneck, you've completely avoided that, you know? So Yeah, you get this that basically nice kind of close fit. Exactly. Like this basically yeah. mimics a raglan shaping. Um, and because you also have it, like have this little point here at the bottom. So you knit it from the top down starting with the turtleneck then increasing for the shoulders where you have this gorgeous twisted rib continuing down and then you start the middle part at the same time with this cute cable t detail and then so where you see it puckers a little bit here oops this is not showing up super well so here you know um so this is where you then start working flat instead of in the round. Um, and you can see, for me, my gauge is pretty, like not pretty different, but it's different if I'm knitting stuck in it in the round versus flat. So that's something mm -hmm. that's gonna block out, but this is why this looks like this. And so you work this part flat um, to give it a little more length than, than in the back. So to cover the entire chest area, which I think is really nice because because that tends to get cold. So yeah, yeah. Um, I loved it. It's a super potato chippy knit, especially because you have a four row cable repeat. That's super intuitive. And I was just like, I just want to go to the next cable repeat <laughs> and stuff. Yeah. Um, which is also where I made like one mistake in the pattern because I was so excited about the potato chippiness of the cable repeat that I did one more cable repeat than it called for. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. I figured, That's you know, okay. it's, it's, yeah, it's more length. Extra and, length uh, isn't terrible. Ex exactly. <laughs> yeah. So I absolutely love this. Um, if you're in the market for a cow for your little one, this is sized up to age six. Highly recommend it. Ooh. Maybe we need to do an adult version at some point, then you've got one for when you're biking. Yeah. You totally good. I wouldn't say no to that. <laughs> I think it would be super fun. It's also just really fun to knit, you know? It's like, like kids knits I find are, are usually pretty quick, but this is also extra quick because it's decay weight and you have a lot of interesting things. Like I find, you know, you start with a turtleneck um, and then you have the shaping and then you have the flat bit and then you have the ribbing and then you're yeah. done. Exactly. So it can, there's, really a, nice. there's lots of like little mini sections going through it where you can just get to the next mm. point, which is, yeah. I always love yeah. patterns yeah. like love that because it keeps things moving. Yeah. <laughs> Agreed. So speaking
speaking of patterns that we love, should we talk about all of the things that we have planned for the release of this baby next week? Yes, I'm so excited. Okay, so while we're at the knitting, um, we both um, ordered our yarns for our cast-ons yesterday. I'm so excited. I can't wait to get it on my needle. Me too. Me too. I already have a second request from my mom who wants a shawl. <laughs> but I'm going to save that for a different podcast episode. So she picked out a shawl. Um, so what are, what are you going to be knitting? I'm going to be knitting Yoki. Um, and I'm super excited about it. It took me a long time to decide. Oh, look at it. It's gorgeous. It took me a long time to decide which pattern to pick, but I quickly decided that Yoki is just, it's, I love the neck shaping on it because it's not too tight. It's like that nice mm -hmm. shaping, like I like it a little bit wider. Um, you know I'm an, <clears throat> I'm an absolute sucker for twisted stitches and I love a drop sleeve, so this is right up my alley and I'm so excited about it. I just know I'm going to wear this in the house all the time because you can't go very far um but i know it's going to be one of those things that i just put on to mm. i'm going to wear it over my pajamas i'm going to wear it with my jeans i'm going to wear it with everything and i can't wait i know i'm so gonna make this as well like it's exactly like foxy drop shoulder you know super relaxed fit absolutely right up my alley Ooh, yeah, yeah, I can't wait. It's gonna be so nice. It's gonna and be it's knit especially top like, down, isn't it? Mm, yep, yeah, it is. It. So you can knit it to exactly you know the length that you that you want, which I find really nice with cropped sweaters, yeah. um, with any sweater really, but with cropped especially, so you can just you know finish yeah, it whenever definitely. you want to finish it. So yeah. yeah. So we're going to reveal expensive. our colors next week. Clear pick a yes. beautiful, gorgeous color. I'm Ooh. very excited. It's on its way already. No. So I'm going to be able to do a proper show and tell. And hopefully it'll be on my needles as well. So, yep. Yes. So yep. what are you going to be making? So it was really hard because I love all of the things in there. Um, but I decided that I'm going to cast on our cover pattern find we so not nice. that's going on my needles after Which Yoki i have as well. here oh it's so pretty so, those sleeves it's so so it's so pretty it's a top down also cropped cardigan with these gorgeous balloon sleeves with this cable pattern um and it's knit in merino held with a silk mohair which I've done once for a gift knit, like a baby knit, mm -hmm. um, but not since. And so I'm really, really excited because, um, because I love how it feels and I really enjoy knitting with those two strands held together. I know I'm late, don't tell me that. Like, you know, like everyone's, and their uncle has jumped on that bandwagon. I was the same. The silk mohair. It took me uh, ages but it's to so do it nice. too. Yeah. Oh, and it's so, gorgeous. Yeah. I'm going to cast on that. Our cast on, so that's one way of us celebrating the release, which is going to happen on March 24th. But we also have two really fun new things planned that we're both really excited for and that we want to invite you for. Yeah. Um, and the first thing is happening on the day after the release date. So on March 25th at noon... Um, GMT plus one and that's an Instagram live with us where we're sharing all of the samples and just talk a little bit about issue five yeah I'm looking forward to that it's going to be super chill we're just going to be hanging out looking at all the patterns and um yeah if you have any questions about them at all or you just want to see Hannah Lisa showing them off in all the glory, then we'd love to see you there. Um, I'll be putting a reminder up on Instagram and doing a little countdown. Uh, so if you don't follow us over there and you'd like to come and hang out with us for a bit on our Instagram live, then follow the link below and come and find us on there because we yeah. post 
every day in our stories we're always hanging around and we like showing off random things that we're up to <laughs> not in a weird way just in like a fun this is behind the scenes way so um it'd be lovely to see you over there if you don't already follow us yeah and then you can also ask all of the questions you know if you're like okay hey I did it. You can ask me to put on certain samples if you want to see how they fit yeah. or, you know, like all of those things. And so we think it's going to be super fun. Yeah. Um, and then the other thing is that we're um, kind of going to start a new thing. <laughs> is that, that's, <laughs> that's a wonderful pitch that I did right there. All right. So we want to hang out with you more. So we have these bi-weekly podcasts and as Claire said, we're, we're um, on Instagram, but we're both kind of missing, um, especially, you know, with us going into the second year of this pandemic, um, like real time, just chatty interaction mm. with you that we usually had at yarn festivals and such. And um, we decided that issue five is the perfect time for us to kickstart a monthly knit night so it's a super chill come with your work in progress come with your favorite beverage just hang out with us for 15 minutes half an hour an hour once a month and we'll chat and you know just just talk um essentially and we're kicking this new thing off with a party yay <laughs> party, party, party. Uh, so we're gonna have um again nothing fancy not a fancy cocktail dress party but a chill knit party um on clear help me with the date so i know it's the thursday so that should be the first april, april the first yeah so april, april the first. first it's not an april fool's joke we're really no. doing this <laughs> i only as i and, said it i was like oh <laughs> yeah but it's really good to remember, you know, like April yeah. 1st. So it's happening on April 1st at 7.30 GMT plus one. So everyone who's um, in Europe, you know, continental Europe or the UK, for them it's going to be towards the end of the work day. For people in the US, we're hoping that you're going to be joining us over your lunch break, which, you know, you're working from home, grab your knitting, grab a little bite, something, something, hang out with us for a little while. Um, and we're gonna uh, do this thing over Zoom. So we're gonna be sharing links to sign up for this everywhere, you know, on Instagram, uh, in our newsletter, on our website, possibly, also in the down bar below, uh, so that you can come hang out with us. Yeah, so excited. We don't have all the details completely set up, so it won't be in the descriptions below just yet. Um, but as soon as we've got it all ironed out, that we'll put everything down below in yes. the newsletter and out on Instagram. So you can find all of the details in all those areas. Yeah, we just wanted to you, you to know about those two things so that you can block your calendars if you want to yes. join us for that. And we really just love to hang out. Both of them are supposed to just be fun. Yeah, and we just want to talk about knitting all the time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We want to talk about knitting. We want to see what you're <laughs> knitting, um, you know. And, like, I don't know if anyone's asking themselves that. It doesn't have to be anything from us. Like, you can come with any no. whip or anything. No. You just also just want to hang out. on your needles. Come hang out. Yeah. Actually, it doesn't even need to be knitting. If you're sewing something at the time or, mm. you know, you're yeah. weaving or whatever you're doing. Embroidery. Just come along and hang out with if us. you like, be crafty. stitching something. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I think that's everything that we have for you today, isn't it? Did I forget anything there? The only thing we should probably tell people is what we're wearing because we always forget to do that mm. and then people always ask us, um, which is super sweet. So I guess we can sign off with a little bit of uh, info on what we've got on. <laughs> so yes. I'm wearing what are you wearing? Petiole. I wear my petiole all the time because it's so cozy. Um, this is from issue three, um, designed by Stephanie Earp. Um, and the yarn is Stolen Stitches Newer Sport and um i love it i've not even blocked it it's still not blocked i think anytime i've worn it on the podcast i say this it still isn't blocked i just keep wearing it so it now well let's face it now it does need to be blocked because i probably need to wash it um 
But yeah, I absolutely love it and it's so cozy and it's minus 12 here today. So it's nice to have something so Ooh. soft. It's got, That's it's a crazy. linen blend, which makes you think that it should be more of like a warm weather kind of sweater but it's got yak in it as well and um mm. it's also mixed with merino too so it's very soft and um kind of a little fluffy and it kind of i just love yeah. it it's so comfortable oh and it's gorgeous and i love that color on you mm. i love this color as well it's very pretty this was cerebellum colorway cerebellum yeah i remember i think that's the first time i've ever just remembered it right off the top of my head <laughs> yay <laughs> Whee! What have you got on? Um, I have one of my favorite shawls on. This is actually a sample. Um, so this is um, the Atmosphere shawl, also from issue three, which is more of a shawl and scarf recipe kind of thing. Um, so it's a pattern that was written by us in-house. And it's really designed to work with whatever you have in your stash. So this is in um, the Fiberco Cumbria. I'm blanking on the colorway name, but it's this really pretty teal. And it's essentially just a triangular shawl, you know, like I wear this bandana style kind of thing. Um, nice. But the, the pattern um, gives you a couple of different stitch pattern options and then walks you through how to design your own shawl or scarf with those and um, I love that. yeah I made this and it's huge and I really really like Gorgeous. it like it's it's just I'm just gonna stand up so you can see like it's one of those it really covers as I said the entire chest area so that I don't get cold and it's really cozy so, I love it yeah I think the color might be trout back I think Maybe. those are those are colorways I always remember because they're named after places in Cumbria, which is very close to where I grew I up, so. so just look this up. All oh right. yeah, good um, idea. This is Windermere. Windermere. Oh, that's near where I got married. I got married in Windermere. Oh, yeah. oh, oh. Love. England. Wonderful. Oh, I miss it. Hmm. At oh some point, travel's going to be possible again. Yeah, soon. Fingers crossed. <laughs> yeah. But no, I absolutely love that shawl. I always mean to make it for myself whenever there's more knitting hours in the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I think with that wish, it's a wonderful wish to end the podcast with having more knitting yeah. hours in the day. Um Definitely. Which, let's face it, is not going to happen for us in the next few weeks. Because release weeks no. are awesome and very full. But that's okay because we have our cast-ons to look forward to and some beautiful yarn on our on its way exactly. to us. So, yay. Yay. so um, you can, of course, tune back in here in two weeks for the next podcast episode. And in the meantime, catch us on Instagram Live on the 25th at noon GMT plus one or then follow us wherever you want to follow us whether that's subscribing to our newsletter or following us on Instagram to get the note on how to sign up for our very first knit party that's gonna happen on April 1st yay, yay. I can't wait for that me neither alrighty <laughs> loves stay safe take good care of yourselves and we'll see you again here in two weeks See you soon. Bye. Bye.